sounds great. <laughs> well, so uh, thanks so much, everybody, for being here today. Thank you, Randy, for uh, setting this all up. Super excited to be here. Um, so we're going to be talking about picking your perfect platform, basically, today. There are, there are so many different things that you can be on, so many different platforms that are out there. So uh, that's that's a common question I get. People are are always wondering, which one should I be on? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And uh, thank you so much for choosing to spend some time with us. And let's get to it. All right. So as a small business, uh, you may have heard that you need to be on social media to grow your business. Perhaps that's something that you've heard before, right? Uh, but the thought of how to get started, which channels to be on, how to engage with people and get results that grow your business, it can all seem so overwhelming. So now um, I know that as a small business owner, you don't have a lot of time or a lot of resources to help you get started with and keep up with social media. So, um, you know, let's talk about or let's take a look at why using social media for your business or your nonprofit can be so powerful. Now, in this day and age, people want to be able to find and communicate with you on social media. And the truth is that 21% of consumers are more likely to buy from brands that they can reach on social media. So. Um, we are uh, going to be talking about some of the ways that people can find you on social media and the different platforms that they can reach you on. Another benefit of social media is that you can influence your audience. 37% of consumers' purchasing decisions are actually influenced or inspired by their friends' social media posts. So something that's really going to help spread the word about your business, and you want to make sure that you are there, uh, you've got your seat at the table, and people can share your stuff too. Now, another benefit to social media is that people want to show support for the causes that they believe in. 84% of people choose to share information in order to help spread the word for a cause that they care about. So these stats that I just gave you are just a few of the reasons why you should be utilizing social media for your business. And so let's uh, let's take a peek at the different platforms that are out there so that you can better educate yourself on which ones to start with. Um, now, for um, I, I would imagine that most of you are on at least one different social media platform for your business specifically. Regardless of what you're doing professionally, you're probably on at least one social media account for your business. I mean, you're here on Alignable, so that's at least one. Um, so as some of you may have already experienced, finding the time and the resources to manage your social media efforts can be a little bit challenging, right? But it doesn't have to overwhelm you. So if you are just getting started on social media for your business or you're you're really deciding to get into it and, and uh, make something happen, keep in mind that you do not need to be on every single site that's out there. Now, I suggest starting with one or two platforms that you use on a regular basis. That way, you can start to learn what works best for your audience, what works best for your business. And then, if you want, and if it makes sense, you can extend that knowledge to use on other platforms after you've figured out what works, what doesn't, and what's right for your business. I can give you best practices all day long, but what really matters in the end is what is best for your business. So now it is important to understand that each social platform out there is a little bit different. They all have uh, their own voices, their own etiquette, um, their own formatting. So, you know, that keep that in mind that you can't just do the same thing across every platform. Now, ideally, you want to choose social platforms based on the customers who you are trying to reach. Um, you want to choose a platform based on your business goals and on the personality of your brand. So let's take a look at each of these, uh, at, at a variety of different platforms. We're not going to be able to talk about every single one of them because there are so many, but we're going to talk about the top platforms that are out there and um, what's different about them, what are some best practices for them. So we are starting off with Facebook because Facebook continues to be the biggest social platform out there. It really is the best place for businesses that aim to promote brand awareness, generate leads, or retarget audiences that have already engaged with their brand. Now, a little, uh, a few stats about Facebook. Facebook has 2.93 billion 
monthly active users. So almost 3 billion people log on to Facebook every month. There is a very high likelihood that your ideal client is on Facebook. Um, Facebook is the third most visited website in the world after uh, Google and YouTube, I believe, unless that's changed, but I just looked at these stats, so third visited website in the world, um, and Facebook is the favorite social demographic or favorite social platform for the 35 to 45 uh, demographic, but there absolutely are plenty of people on either side of that age spread that you can reach on Facebook. Now, Facebook is great for getting link clicks, for word of mouth awareness and event registrations. Uh, it also provides a great opportunity to engage with your customers by responding to comments and messages. Um, you can take advantage of some of the platform's features like the event calendar to extend your reach, um, fundraising tools if you have a nonprofit, uh, and of course, all of the live video options. Um, you can help your followers get to know your business on this platform through videos, um, or recording recorded videos, photos, all sorts of good stuff you can do on Facebook. Now, Facebook is considered a low volume, high value network. So you'll want to aim for content quality versus content quantity. Um, you don't want to be posting too frequently on Facebook. That could frustrate your followers a little bit. So I recommend posting a minimum of three times per week and no more than 10 times per week. Now, uh, Instagram is the next platform we're gonna talk about. It's very much a brand building platform. So you need to have lots of high quality images and videos or graphics in order to generate um, foot traffic, word of mouth, uh, engagements through likes and comments. Now, Instagram is the fourth most used social media platform at this point, and Instagram is getting up there with uh, with Facebook, and it has more than 2 billion active monthly users. Um, Instagram's audience, interestingly, is 52.2% male. You might not have known that, but that has absolutely changed uh, over the last several years. So more men on the platform than others, and 47% of American adults use Instagram. So lots and lots of people are on this platform, and just about any type of business can find success here. Now, Instagram provides you with the opportunity to gain engagement um, and organic growth through hashtags, uh, through its discovery page, uh, through its location tools. So if you have a brick and mortar business, like a restaurant, for example, customers, this is so awesome. Customers can take pictures of their meal. They can post it on their own feed. They can tag your business. They can uh, tag the location. And that helps to uh, create word of mouth exposure within their network for your business, which is so incredibly valuable. Um, you might want to consider encouraging your customers to share photos from your business to Instagram through things like contests or uh, maybe offer a promotion or a discount for those folks who do tag your business in their feed. You, um, Instagram is so great for sharing behind the scenes photos and videos of your products, your services, you know, whatever's going on at your business. This is an awesome place to kind of, you know, pull back the curtain in your stories or your reels. Um, so ask your audience what their favorite product is or um, what they want to learn about with your business and respond to those questions and engage in conversations in the comments of your posts. Um, you can do live videos on Instagram for live Q&A uh, or updates about your business, all sorts of things that you can do on Instagram. Now, it used to just be you can share a picture, but now you've got pictures, you've got videos, you've got reels, you've got live videos, you've got stories. There's all sorts of stuff that you can do on Instagram. Now, when it comes to frequency, a good goal with Instagram would be to post once a day, uh, but a little more or less won't significantly hurt your engagement. So you want to be aiming here for about five to seven times a week, and that's for feed posts. You can do multiple times a day in stories if that's something that you enjoy doing and your audience responds well to. Having something constantly in your stories means that you are constantly getting that front row spot at the top of their home feed. So you always are showing up. Even if people aren't watching your stories, they're still seeing your name and your logo every day. Now, Twitter, oh, Twitter, Twitter's going through some changes and is rebranding to X. So Twitter or X, 
whichever one you want to call it. It's a fast moving, real time news driven platform. So it is really great for uh, businesses and nonprofits that are tied to current events and run events of their own. Um, now, Twitter is the world's seventh uh, favorite social media platform out there. This, I got these stats a month ago, so it's possible that that has changed. Um, but 62.9% uh, of Twitter users are male. So that might not be surprising. Um, and users aged 18 to 34 like Twitter the most out of all the generations. So it's a, a, it's a definitely a younger platform, which definitely did not used to be the case. So keep that in mind as well. So Twitter has a strong customer service element to it. So it's a really great place to engage um, with uh, in, in conversations with your followers. So make sure to share news and updates from your business often. Um, and don't hesitate to post curated content as well. Since Twitter is so fast moving, um, you wanna share your, uh, your related products, your uh, any updates to your business, uh, any events that you have going on that are gonna help keep people engaged. Now, this is a high volume, low value network. So you can share more here because of Twitter's fast paced nature. Um, so I recommend posting a minimum of five times a day. So that can be an awful lot for a lot of people. Um, and there's no maximum posting limit. Um, I would say try to aim for at least 30 times a week. Um, that's a lot again, <laughs> um, but because it's so fast moving, you want to make sure that you're showing up. So share content created by you or created, uh, curated from other sources. You do not have to be creating all the content. I mean, that would be ridiculous, right? So please feel free to share other people's stuff on your Twitter account. Um, just make sure that it's relevant, obviously. Now, when it comes to LinkedIn, you're going to probably take a little bit of a different approach. Um, while other platforms do have a focus on personal interests for your personal pages, uh, LinkedIn is a, primarily a professional networking-driven platform, um, and it's more low-volume, high-value. Um, LinkedIn has 875 million users, so it's a little bit smaller. 57.2% um, of LinkedIn users identify as men. 42.8 identify as women. So again, good for you to know if that is important for your demographics. Now, this is something that when I was looking up these stats, this really surprised me. Over 77% of LinkedIn users are from outside of the US. So if your business is primarily US based, then LinkedIn might not be the best place for you to be but something to consider. Uh, and almost 60% of LinkedIn users are 25 to 34 years old. So also this is a platform that's shifting to younger folks when it definitely used to be at the other end of the spectrum. Um, but a lot of recent college grads and folks who are, are just entering the workforce are um, getting onto LinkedIn and, and using it to their advantage. Now, this is the place that you want to be to connect with other businesses and potential clients if you are a B2B. Um, it's a must for your social media marketing strategy if you are a B2B company like software providers, uh, maybe luxury goods or professional services. <clears throat> now, on this platform, you'll want to make sure that your content doesn't dominate the feed, but that you're sharing relevant content uh, to that or content that's relevant to your business and to your industry. You want to post links to articles and events, uh, maybe share some of your case studies, certainly news and tips and best practices. You want to set yourself up as a, a, a subject matter expert, as an expert in your industry, and that you are uh, a one-stop shop where people can come and learn all about the good stuff that your industry is all about. So now, again, I said that this is a, a lower volume platform, so you want to aim um, for uh, you know more more uh, formal and technical content so that's more high value and you'll want to post a minimum of two times a week and a maximum of five so this is something that is uh, definitely a lower frequency now what about TikTok? Uh, TikTok is definitely uh, a, 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 a buzzy platform at this point. It's new and it, it's exciting and it's a solely video-based platform. Now TikTok is the fastest growing social network with 100% growth rate between 2021 and 2022. 25% of TikTok's US users are between 10 and 19. So if that is your target demographic, then this is a perfect platform to be on. Uh, 
54% are women, 46% are men. Uh, and the most, uh, it's really the most engaging social media platform at this point um, with a 4.25 engagement rate, which is, is, it might sound low, but that's actually nice and high. Um, but that is decreasing at about 28% per year. So um, it's, it's, it's evolving as all social platforms do. <laughs> now, um, you know, with TikTok, with any social platform, you know, think about how you want to be perceived and the bandwidth that you have to keep up with it. Now, TikTok is going to be a bit more work because of the fact that you are creating videos. So realistically, can you maintain that? Um, not everybody needs to be trendy. Uh, it's more important to be strategic and um, keep be, be on a platform that you can manage. Um, so where do your customers expect you to be? While there certainly is information sharing happening on TikTok, absolutely. Um, the big thing with this is that it needs to be entertaining and engaging at the same time so that people continue consuming your content. Um, it, you know, has to, it has to capture people's attention. Otherwise, it's not going to go over very well. Now, for business purposes, uh, TikTok increases the familiarity with your business, your products, your services. So it's excellent for increasing your brand awareness. This is a wonderful place for doing product demos. Uh, even client testimonials would be great to do here. Like every other platform, you need to be showing up regularly. So you'll want to be posting a minimum of three times per week and a maximum of four times per day. So those were the, the really high uh, you know, high look at those platforms. And, um, you know, we don't have time today to dive really deep into each of them and get into the nitty gritties. So I wanted to give you just a high level look at those platforms that are very popular for business purposes. So with that in mind, I know that the thought of being on social media for a lot of small businesses can be really overwhelming. I just went through a lot of information really quickly. And so if you are, again, if you're just getting started or if you're struggling to manage multiple channels, remember that I recommend just choosing one platform, really focusing on that, getting to know it, getting to um, see what works for you, for your business, for your audience, what is, um, you know, really focus on that and, and just rock it. Because then once you feel like you've mastered that one platform, you might realize I don't need any other platforms. Or you might say, oh, I feel like I understand this really well and I can apply what I've learned to another platform and do well there. But if you try to be on all of those platforms I just talked to you about all at once and you're not doing a great job with any of them, you are just really gonna be spreading yourself too thin, spinning your wheels, and it's gonna make you feel like you're not accomplishing anything. So again, just pick one platform. It is okay, I give you permission to only be on one social platform. And this way, again, you're going to be able to figure out what works for you, what doesn't, and adjust your strategy accordingly to get results moving forward. Now, in order to be effective on any of these sites, it is important to gain and grow your following. So to do that, I recommend a variety of things. First off is asking your email list, because I know that all of you are sending regular emails out to your audience, right? <laughs> so uh, if you have an audience that you're already communicating with through email, you have the perfect opportunity to have them engage with you even more. Um, so send out an email specifically promoting your social media pages. Give them um, the value of following you. What's in it for them? What are they going to get out of this? Um, and of course, make sure to add in the uh, social media icons to your regular email template to provide an easy way for them to get to your sites every single time you email them. Um, and make sure that you have the links going to the right social pages. <laughs> that is very important. Don't assume that if you say, oh, go to Facebook and follow me, that they're, they're going to be able to find you. Um, Trust me on that. Link directly to your platforms. Now, um, you can do some extra things like running a contest, uh, maybe giving away a prize for reaching a certain amount of followers. Um, you can let them know that the uh, the most uh, up-to-date um, uh, information and news is found on your social media accounts. And by following you, they're going to be in the know for everything that's going on. That's an awesome thing to do. 
Also, don't be afraid to ask in person. If you are a brick and mortar business, if you are interacting with people face to face, hang up signs or put up flyers promoting your social media platforms. Um, you can also ask your customers to tag you in any posts about your business or your products. Um, so for any restaurants out there, make sure you have on your menus, you know, maybe your uh, your Instagram handle or your uh, the um, uh, the hashtag that you want people to use or both, you know, train people with uh, with how you want them to have you show up <laughs> so that um, you know that they are, are getting that right information. Now, you can also search for people near you or by related hashtags and follow them. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, they all allow you, um, oh, and LinkedIn too. Um, so does TikTok. Basically, Everybody lets you use hashtags at this point. <laughs> so um, they allow you the ability to use hashtags in your posts. And then of course you can search by that hashtag to find content, to find uh, accounts that make sense for you to follow. And then of course you want to include your own hashtags as well. Um, so before, um, you, you, you should always be using a hashtag that is yours. So for example, in almost every single post that I do uh, on Instagram, for example, I use the hashtag ZingPopSocial. So I'm training my followers to use ZingPopSocial if they are um, posting something about me so that I can go to that hashtag and I can just see everything about it and I can interact with posts as I would like to. And you can do the same thing for your uh, company. So make sure that you have a consistent hashtag that you are using, that you are also uh, training your followers to utilize as well. Um, so, and then if just as far as finding other people who would be relevant for you, um, look at your competitors and see what hashtags they're using. And then maybe you can go and uh, follow those hashtags if that makes sense for you. Use them in your own if you want people to start uh, getting into um, uh, you know, if you want your content to be found in the same sort of places that those competitors are showing up. Hashtags that can be incredibly powerful, but don't worry if they overwhelm you. That's something that you can learn all about. <laughs> okay. So uh, with that, we have gotten through all of the basic information. And so I would like to invite you to join me in one of my various groups that I have. Um, I am the ambassador for the Alignable Alliance of Silicon Valley. So for those of you who are showing up from the Silicon Valley today, please come join me there. Um, I'm also the leader for all things email marketing. So any questions you have about email marketing, I would be delighted to answer them. I also have a uh, one of the few paid groups on the Alignable platform. And that's email and social media rock stars. Um, so that's a place where you can uh, learn more about social media, email, listing and reviews, um, anything that really has to do with online marketing. I'm happy to talk about it. So please come and join me there. And then if you are a women business owner in the SF Bay area, please join me in that group. Uh, I'm also a co-leader in the constant contact community group. So I'm all over alignable and I would love to have you join me in any of those groups that are applicable for you. <laughs>